Good evening. As we all know that we are unable to have normal classes due to this complete lockdown. Uh, through this video today, I am going to explain one of the poems in our syllabus, Death Be Not Proud. Death Be Not Proud is a sonnet written by English poet John Donne. John Donne initially wrote poems based on romance but moved into religious themes as his career uh, matured. In his later life, uh, John Donne converted from Catholicism into Anglicanism. His later poems re reflect his deep religious faith and his life as an ordained, ordained priest and dean, uh, dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Death Be Not Proud is a piece showing the undertones, showing the religious undertones of uh, Dunn's poetry. This is the text. Uh, this is the text of uh, Death Be Not Proud. Uh, this poem is a part of the Holy Sonnet, uh, Sonnets, which is a series of nineteen poems written by John Dunn that center on his religious beliefs and ideas. Uh, it was written in 1609 uh, and it was first published in 1633. This poem, Death Be Not Proud, follows uh, the structure of a patriarchal sonnet which has uh, uh, 14 lines divided into an 8 line stanza uh, which is known as octave and a 6 line stanza which is also called uh, sestet. The rhyme scheme of the first stanza is A B B A A B B A, and uh, the second stanza is C D D C E E. This devotional lyric uh, directly addresses uh, uh, death, uh, as though death is a pers person raging differently against his perceived uh, haughtiness. Uh, the theme seen throughout this poem is that death is unable to corrupt. The eternal soul. The eternal soul. Now, uh, this is the first two lines of the poem. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. Here, the speaker creates a personified version of death by talking directly to him. Um, he paints a picture of death as an arrogant being, and one who needs to be humbled. He tells death to be uh, to uh, uh, he tells death that he ought not to be so proud, even though for generations uh, people have uh, feared death and called him mighty and dreadful. Uh, however, uh, with a voice of absolute authority on the matter, a speaker simply states, "Thou art not so." Here in this phrase, "Thou art not so," uh, what the speaker tries to point out is that. Uh, death is not that powerful or dreadful so we do not have to fear death heta yan speaker yan death thina hi direct takin mishing ang main abia a chapo thei din muna adin lo ziate a shil boka atang queen he death thina hi la om le tri bai om taka ngai ngai na kha a om ta ma se het yang ang hi alo ni reng reng lo fa chu wang chuan lo em em ngai lo fe aron ti ta ni This is the third and fourth lines of the poem. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. Here in these uh, uh, two lines, uh, the speaker accuses death of having illusions of grandeur. Uh, he claims that while death thinks that he has the power to kill, he actually does not. He actually, death. Death thinks that he uh, he has the power to kill, but in the real sense, he does not uh, actually possess that power. The speak uh, the speaker first humbles death by telling him that his idea that he has the power to overthrow lives is simply an illusion, and that he has no such power at all. Then, uh, to further humiliate death, the speaker calls the, he calls him poor death. Uh, it sounds almost as if the speaker is making fun of uh, death for having lived uh, under the impression, under the illusion that he had any sort of power over life or death. Uh, then he addresses death in a more 
personal manner challenging him by saying yet canst thou kill me though everyone knows that uh, physical death does indeed occur uh, the speaker is challenging death uh, in this poem the speaker is challenging death in a uh, different way he uses the christian theology of eternity to uh, the christian theology of eternity to taunt death and the third and the fourth fourth line i can speak again around so soy chunjom le ta death and me thi na hian majestic tak le powerful tak alo in ngai ngai hi atidik lo ti xilin death ka adem adem zong in aron chong ta aron soi ta thi na hian mi nu na nge thi na hian power to kill mi nu na chat mi nu na ti to the anga ain ngai lai khan a reality a chuan chutiang power chu ane tak tak lo aron ti ta a death thi na kha deu so takin poor death ti te khan aron ko tel bok ta ani personal deu takin kami nu khan personal deu takin death ne na hian yet can stop kill me te ati ta a of a challenge a hemi physical death hemi kan tak sa thi na hi om ti hemi tak tak hi chuwa om ti kan shevek ta ma se hemi pho ma hi chuan speaker hian thi na hi kong dang kong dang deu let khan aron attack a christian tena kan rin dan kan rin dan hemi kan theology after life hemi kan soul in a eternal life ane in a tour kam eternity lam kha aron clear ta ani now this is a Uh, the fifth and sixth lines of the poem from rest and sleep which but thy pictures be much pleasure then from thee much more must flow with these lines uh, the speaker compares death to rest and sleep and he even uses the word pleasure to describe how one should feel about uh, death uh, just as a restful night of sleep brings pleasure so should death he explained that mm, uh, Uh, we we had a busy day and we are tired so af uh, uh, after that we had a restful night of sleep and uh, that restful night of sleep brings pleasure to uh, to us to our body uh, and it uh, it it activates us again it activates our body again after we rest uh, we had a restful night so just like that that should give us that uh, that peace that peace that pleasure he says that the uh, the speaker uh, and also the speaker implies that sleep is simply a small glimpse of death thus thus he says that there is nothing to fear in death uh, for death will bring something like a pleasurable sleep heta yan speaker hen death ka rest le sleep ne khan a in ang thok khat deu tho in aron tar lang ta a kan taksa na thok reng chin kha ha tak na thok reng chin khan rest le sleep ha dam ha dam tak a muthil siai siai ama mo a chutianga chang chuan ha dam na kan lo nei chin ta a ke chutiang bok chuan hemi death thi na hi hemi death thi na hi a rest le sleep ang chia khan thil ha dam thak thil nga hel om tak ha dam na thuru min thlen tu tur ang khan aron tar lang ta a a hla om lo zia ron tar lan atum na ani ani chu hemi line na chuan la um anga aron in portray ka lo tu ni lo you should not be proud ma death ka you should not be proud first line aron ti to ang khan kata khanin het yang zong hian aron clear ta ani now this is the seventh and eighth lines of the poem and soonest our best men with thee do go rest of their bones and souls delivery here in this seventh and eighth lines the speaker says that the best man seem to experience death the soonest while uh, others have long questioned why it seems as if the best people die soonest the speaker offers an answer here uh, suggesting that uh, the best among men deserve to experience the peaceful rest of death sooner without having to endure the agonies of a long life on the earth The speaker describes death as a uh, uh, rest of their bones and souls delivery. Uh, both of these descriptions make death seem like a welcome friend who comes to graciously offer rest and peace and the deliverance of and the deliverance of one's soul from an 
earthly body where pain and suffering abide. Hey, my line, sorry, in a line, real na yan speaker yan. Covid lang yung tap tap best man. How he kal masa, ti masa an ni duwe aron tita. Eh, ta yan zo na tap tap. Eh, alaw um to chin. Eh, ah, alaw um to tay ta. Eh, na tingi best people, best man. Eh, mi chat tap tap how he an ti masak ti ang zo ang zo na ka um tay ta ni. Masay. Emilai na yanin speaker yan he mitana tu he aron suggest ta a the best among men how can peaceful rest of death ka an puli a he ani ati ta a atan tu kovela kan har san na tap tap pal tang tur kovela han har san na tap tap pal tang tur om ta a he har san na zong zong like a entina nat nate nat na kir kan tap te le lusun mang an nate le har san na ti shang shang and so hard religious of life ka kami shim shim ka rey tak an tor bel cha ngay tong lo khan eng ma eng tong nei lova an om tuay tuay te na tur khan he mi peaceful rest of death an lo experience tuay ka an deserve aron tita an pu e me mani aron tita ni an ha jol ma aron tita ni ju he ta death a describe da na hian nge rest of their bones le souls delivery te a tita a ti na death ka Cian catak lau kala kan taksa, ini kan physical body tan hat jor nale hadam nene minron minron petu angkanim aron talang taa cumi ti na friendly nale taka aron talang juan kan le taksa, ini earthly body nale harsat nati nere macam macam cing ka freedom aron petaa kan tarau kan eternal rest ane teh to don aron tita ane ini line ayan. Now lines 9 and 10 of the poem. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings and desperate men, endorsed with prison, war and sickness dwell. Here the speaker takes on a stronger tone and begins to taunt death with more ferocity than uh, he did at first. Here he calls death a slave to fate, chance, kings and desperate men. He tells death that uh, he is not mighty and dreadful, but rather a poor slave who cannot even act on his own, but is driven not only by fate and chance, but also by people, rich and poor alike. Uh, death is fully controlled by fate and chance, and often administered by rulers or uh, people acting desperately. Uh, fate means be destined to happen to everybody and by chance the speaker here means death which occurred uh, due to accidents and uh, the speaker also mentions death being slave to kings what he means to say here is that kings or rulers possess the power to give uh, death a sentence and there are some people who are desperate enough uh, to commit suicide the speaker also points out that death is also associated with poison, war, and illness. Ita yan, a speaker yan ti na hi, ti na death hi, ama ay warin aron attack le ta. Ti na hi ama ama tune na noy om nilovin mitinin kanton chau tour ani avang avang te van duay na van duay pal vanga kan kanto te na te le. Lalek tu nai tu ten kan chung tu an rel te na te le minun minun bay dong minun bay dong ten an ma ni nun na an lak chin avang chau alo tling an ni ti in a speaker hian death hemi ti na hian ma ni in power to kill nun na laka tu nai na an ni lau zia aron nem nge ta ni lines 11 and 12 uh, one, uh, and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well, and better than thy stroke, why swellest thou then? Here, uh, the speaker continues to taunt death even more, uh, saying that all he brings is a little sleep, and, and he does not even do that as well as some others who brings rest, such as poppy or charms, uh, in simple words, drugs or uh, magic spells. This comparison further portrays death as something not only weak but even pleasurable. This comparison further portrays death as something not only weak but even pleasurable. 
uh, the speaker questions death asking why swellest thou then he is asking him why he is so uh, why he is so puffed up with pride when he cannot even do his job as uh, do his job as well as others can heta uh, yan speaker yan death he ala attack tun zom zela little sleep chau athlen the te atia ju po muthil na min thlen the thil dang muthil na min thlen the tu dang poppy or charms ri the thil le doi lam chi hian an na an thok chama zo ke te kha atita a hetia poppy le charms te ne na aron compare hian death he ati lang week vyao maya why swellest thou then te kha atita zo na te zo pa kha ni in wang inge cha po ta ka alo om thei aron tita ni Lines 13 and 14, the last two lines of the poem. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Di death, thou shalt die. Now, with these final two lines, the speaker reveals exactly why he has been taunting death so relentlessly. Although it is obvious that death is real and that people who experience death do not come back to earth, the speaker reveals his reasons for claiming that death is weak and easily overcome. He claims that uh, death is only one short sleep, and that those who experience death with uh, those who experience death with wake eternally. Uh, then he claims that death death shall be no more. Uh, finally, he tells death, "Thou shalt die." The speaker has not only told death that he has no real power over anyone, but that he will experience the end of himself when all wake eternally. When all wake in eternity and death will be no more. Hemi atop tlar paniya hianin a last line paniya hianin a speaker hian death a etek na chan te ka aron soifia aron soifia ti na hitil tak tak an chumat heng to te po kovel anon kile to loga amero chu a speaker hian ti na hi a week ma niya tune na neilo. Olsam taka ne te ani na te aron aron talang zel ta ti na hirey lo te muthil na muthil na cao ania ani hemi lo tem to te hemi lo tem to ne to ho ti may la nga le tak sa lo ti to ho te su zatua na tang kay to inan um to zo ani aron ti ta a ti na hian tu chunga ma tu ne na an tak tak ani lo va mi zong zong zatua na kay to kan ni vek nua pei chuan thi na po hian ama to phun ala tong ve to na thi na hi a omle a thi na hi omle ngai to don lo ani aron tita ani death death shall be no more death thou shalt die te ka aron tita khamo so using the metaphor of death the poet argues that death is not permanent and it serves as an eternal pathway to life hereafter uh, he has also demonstrated the christian doctrine of uh, resurrection and immortality of the soul calling death as an inferior and uh, john dunn john dunn has presented death as a powerless figure he denies the authority of death with logical reasoning uh, saying that death does not kill people Instead, it liberates their souls and directs them to eternal life. John Dunn does not consider death as man's invincible conqueror. Uh, instead, he calls it a poor fellow without having free will. Okay? Uh, the arrival of death is compared with a short rest and sleep that recuperates a person for the upcoming journey. Uh, we can say that uh, the central theme of the poem is uh, the powerlessness of, of death. According to Dunn, death is but a pathway to eternal life and as such uh, is not something mighty and dreadful as some may believe it to be. Okay, thank you.